and Sonny Davis, the Davis Twins. You and me together, life's a pleasure. Honey and Sonny Davis, known to their legion of fans as the Davis Twins, grew up as part of the golden age of radio. It was a time of uncertainty, when most of the world was at war, and people were desperate for hope, innocence, and a sense that things would be okay. The Davis Twins were all that, and more. Before turning 12, they had already won nearly every amateur contest they entered within 50 miles of their home in New Lexington, Ohio. But it was their performance at the 1938 Ohio State Fair that sealed their professional fate. Performing in front of 10,000 people, the twins, who were just 12, took first place, earning $50 and a trophy cup. Sonny and Honey were born Maxine and Niall Jr. in New Lexington, Ohio in 1926. While their parents, Jeanette and Niall Sr., were not musical, their children were. At age three, they sang Jesus Loves Me in church and were taking piano lessons at age six. Soon, Honey switched to mandolin and Sonny to guitar. The morning after that fateful day at the Ohio State Fair, Blaine Smith and Tommy Nelson, both regulars on Wheeling, West Virginia's WWVA Jamboree, showed up at their house. They wanted the Davis twins to join the Jamboree family. Their parents politely declined, saying the twins were too young. But two years later, in 1940, Blaine and Tommy returned. This time, their parents agreed to let them move to Wheeling and join the show. Jeanette went with them, while Niall Sr., a drag man for the railroad, remained at home to work. It was at that time that they became known as Honey and Sonny, the Davis twins. Being members of the world's original jamboree was an experience that only fueled their passion for performing. The jamboree, which at the time rivaled Nashville's Grand Ole Opry and Chicago's WLS Barn Dance, showcased the biggest stars in country music. Next stop was Fairmont's Sagebrush Roundup, where they played with Grandpa Jones. When they returned to Wheeling, they attended Wheeling High School. Their days began with a 15-minute slot on WWVA at 6 a.m. After school, they performed again at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. In the evening, they often had an out-of-town show. Honey and Sonny graduated from Wheeling High School in 1944. The next morning, Sonny left for the Navy. Honey continued to sing and moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana. They missed singing together, and they missed each other. It was the first time the twins had been apart. Yes, sir, life's worthwhile. Look at me with a great big smile. My blackbirds are bluebirds now. After the war, Sonny moved back to Wheeling and rejoined the Jamboree, and Honey married Jamboree musician-comedian George Sleepy Jeffers. With WWVA, now a 50,000-watt north-facing station, the show's acts, notably Doc and Chicky Williams, became stars in New England and Canada. Honey and Sonny also toured regionally, performing with name acts like June Carter Cash. They also worked with Hawkshaw Hawkins, a 2009 West Virginia Music Hall of Fame inductee, both at WWVA and on the road. It was during this time that Honey and Sonny were voted the number two duo in the country, second only to Chicago's Lulabelle and Scotty. At one point, their fan club was receiving more than 7,000 pieces of mail a day. You gotta be the greatest and I'll never let you go. Meeting future West Virginia Music Hall of Famers, the Bales Brothers, was also pivotal in their career. They traveled with the Bales to Shreveport, Louisiana, Texas, and Oklahoma, and performed two shows daily for 18 months. Their last big move was to Charleston, West Virginia in 1948. Sonny worked as a disc jockey on Logan Station WVOW, while he and Honey developed a musical comedy act with Sleepy, Roscoe Swerps, Pudgy Parsons, and others. In various configurations, they played shows throughout West Virginia and Ohio. Come here and sit up on my knee, stop acting so precise. I think you are so cute and sweet when you look at me so wise. In the mid-1950s, Sonny hired on at radio station WKLC in St. Albans, where he greeted listeners on its first day of broadcasting. 
He eventually left the station when the format changed from country to rock. Sonny continued to DJ for several more years at Charleston stations WCHS and WTIP. With access to WTIP's recording studio, the Davis Twins recorded a number of sides and released 345s, including You and Me, the local favorite, Dumplin' Pie, and the rockabilly tinged Rough Stuff. Now one of these days you're gonna make me mad and I'm gonna do you like a duck your dad. We had a fuss and come to blows I hit him in the fist with my big nose cause enough's enough. 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 So I'll have you know there, honey Davis, I'm Rough Stuff. Issued in the 1960s, Pretending is a Game has been included on at least five rockabilly compilations. Don't call me darling, don't call me dear, don't say you love me if you are not sincere. Interestingly, while at the Jamboree, they were discouraged from releasing records because the show's executives were concerned that the artists would become too popular and leave. While Sonny was a serious musician, he also had a pragmatic side that wanted financial stability. He opened an electronics repair shop called Louise and the Kids Fix-It Shop in St. Albans, which gave way to Sonny's Frosty Twist, a hot dog stand drive-in restaurant. He operated the hot dog stand for 22 years, eventually adding two more locations. He also taught music lessons for 25 cents a lesson. Locally, Honey and Sonny are best remembered for being regulars on the morning music comedy television shows, The Buddy Starcher Show and The Sleepy Jeffers Show on WCHS-TV. Both shows were a classic mix of music and comedy, a la Hee Haw, with Sleepy developing his comedic character Uncle Willie. The twins stopped performing around 1983. In his later years, Sonny worked at Kasdahl Funeral Home in St. Albans, where his outgoing personality was uplifting to many who had lost loved ones. Although Honey passed away in 2019, she was able to attend the press conference announcing she and Sonny's induction into the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame. Throughout their long career, Honey and Sonny brought heartfelt music and warm smiles to everyone who heard them. Their special twins harmony will hopefully be enjoyed by many future generations.